you might have a nephew, for example, you don't see for a few months, and and then you see him, and it's like, wow, he's changed. He's a completely different person, you know, because they, they 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 grow so fast, right? And kind of the same thing when you're when you're learning a lot, you kind of you you're too my, myopic, you're too close to your own self, and you're learning, you can't see your own improvement, right? Unless you kind of step back and see those snapshots, right? Welcome back to Beyond Borders. Today, you will learn three powerful habits for success with real life English CEO, Justin Murray. Justin, welcome to the show. Oh yeah, what is up, Ethan? I've been really looking forward to this. And if you would like to understand fast speech, be understood by anyone, and connect to the world, just like real lifer Steve, who says that our lessons help him to take his learning outside of the classroom and immerse himself in English, then I want to help you on your journey too. But I can only do that if you hit the subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss any of our new lessons. I was just curious if there's any way that you think that practice could be applied to learning a language. So for example, for English learners, is there a way they can be more meticulous with the data of their learning to, to see patterns and to, to cultivate improvement? Yeah, definitely. I think it goes back to like you and I teaching, you know, we, we, we had our, our students do their, their, you know, their learning logs. Like, what are you doing every day? Just document it. Like how much are you, are you doing each activity? How much are you listening? How much are you speaking? How much are you writing? What are you doing every day? I right? just, that's really important for motivation, first of all. I mean, it just makes you do it. This is part of your process. It makes you reflective, right? Setting goals is kind of the same thing. You set, you, you set those goals, you plan ahead, you, you, you make sure it fits into your life. But I would say there is that angle too, like being data-driven in your learning. Like how much are you listening? And how does this reflect and improve listening ability? How much are you speaking? How does this reflect in your ability to speak better, more clearly, more confidently? Because ultimately you need to do it every day. We know that, right? Like anything that you want to be at your best at, rather than just an amateur, right? I mean, you want to turn pro, right? You want to, you want to make it a part of who you are. You need to do it every day. And um, it doesn't need to be like speaking every day. That can be hard to find that opportunity unless you download the real life app and <laughs> go and press that button and connect with partners from all around the world, right? But uh, yeah, that's actually me keeping it simple, having a four minute conversation, you know? Having a, a four minute conversation that's once per day, really simple, write it down in your, in your, in your log. But yeah, going back to just the main idea is, is making sure that you're cultivating like a nice mixture of activities, listening to podcasts, uh, watching TV series, talking with people, think really deeply about what you want to accomplish and even like imagine yourself at the end of your life, the, uh, all the people, your friends, your family, your workmates, your, um, the people from your spiritual community, what are they going to say at your funeral? And to think like, really, where are you going? And so that really puts things into perspective to write a mission, a clear mission to really refine it and, and then keep coming back to that. And so that's one thing you can do when you're journaling, you can refine that mission, you can come back to it. Another thing they talk about in that book as well is like breaking your life into, into dimensions, right? So you think about um, your body, your mind, your spirit, your social life. And so this is something I do. So I kind of like have a, each dimension, kind of like my spiritual practice, meditation. Um, from there, it's like my, my, my exercise, right? So it's like my health and vitality. And there's work as well. So it's like my craft and calling. And in each of those areas, I kind of clarify uh, what I want from my life. And of course, there's a social aspect of everything. And then there's the learning aspect of everything, right? So it's like you constantly need to be learning, to be curious, to be developing, to, uh, and this is where kind of reading books comes in. But apart from that, like journaling is like really useful because, uh, I mean, first of all, it's like you can, there's so much you can do in there. And it's like each, each page of your journal is a canvas. So you can uh, do gratitude practice. Like just sit down and think about, hmm, what am I grateful for in my life? There's a ton more for you to learn with Justin and other incredible teachers and experts. You can get the full interviews from Beyond Borders anywhere where you listen to podcasts. However, I would recommend that you listen on the Real Life English app. It is the only place where you can get a transcript for the full episode and learn all of the most important vocabulary and more. 
Plus, many learners like you tell me that they are frustrated that they don't have anyone to practice what they are learning with. Well, on the Real Life app, you can have conversations in English with people from all around the world at the touch of a button and discover new cultures. So if you are ready to step outside of the classroom and live your English, then download the app now by searching for Real Life English in the Apple app or Google Play Store, or simply click on the link up here or down in the description below. It's not waking up every day and believing that, like loving what you're doing because it's not always, it's not always fun, right? Sometimes it's, di it's difficult, it's hard. You know, just like running, you know, waking up and like, you know, going for a, you know, a long run when you're hurting and you don't want to and you failed, your body's sore, right? Kind of the same thing, like lighting that fire, you know, having that fire, keeping that lit, keep staying passionate about it. Um, there's a deliberate practice, which is actually, you know, mastering the skills. And I felt like we didn't really give it a, give it a go. We had a lot of things going for us at that time, right? But we were immature, like we had too much going on. We were trying to do events, we were trying to do podcasts, we were trying to do the, you know, YouTube videos, trying to do like blog posts, and we were a small team, right? So it's like, we're trying to do too much. There's so much we were trying to do, and we just had so much to learn. So I would say like, just coming back and having that humility, looking at ourselves, taking responsibility for our own failures, right? And then experimenting. You know, if something's not working, plan A doesn't work, Try plan B. If plan B doesn't work, try plan C. Keep going. And if, if, if you keep doing if you keep doing the same thing, you get lost in that, and that becomes the path to failure because you're not experimenting, you're not changing. But if you're changing and experimenting, that gives you hope because you start building. You start building new strategies. You, you start discovering new paths. For example, like in that same time period, there, there was reason for hope because we we had started learning with TV series. Perseverance is the answer, right? So it's really hard to say. Um, you know, when the right time to keep going is and when the right time to quit is. But in our case, uh, there was just a lot going well. And, and I thought we really hadn't like learned and grown to, to the point where, where we were really masters of, of our own craft and that we needed to, to really give it an honest chance before we can, we can uh, stop and say, oh, this didn't work out mm -hmm. and feel good about it. Yeah. And we're always learning. It's not like we figured it out now and, and we're just laying back and waiting for the the money to roll in or the success to roll in or whatever the case is it's like always <laughs> always an uphill battle but it's one i think like you said it's the the passion that we've we've cultivated that passion that we're willing to keep rolling the boulder up the hill in some sense even when it's it's difficult we're, we're willing to to push and something else you said there the the focus too at that in that moment that was like about four and a half years ago or so that we we stopped doing the podcast for a while um dedicate yourself and focus yourself on, on, on something, even if it's, maybe it's not the absolute best thing, but just the fact that you're showing up every day or every week, whatever the case is, and, and you're doing that, you know, you're continuing to do it. Um, like you said, until you, you've become a master of it in some sense. I want to know, are there any habits that you have found to help set you up for success? Is there something you absolutely have to do every day, like journaling or meditating? Comment it down below for me and your fellow learners and see what other people have said. Maybe you will discover an exciting new hobby. Now let's see what Justin's final favorite habit is. It's just so much to be grateful for. And if you sit down and make a practice out of, out of actually just writing it down, even just a couple minutes a day, uh, it's actually scientifically proven that it's going to drastically change your, your general feeling of well-being in life. It's kind of like I've, I've read that See, we're, we're, we're evolved for, to feel fear, to look out for danger, right? To constantly be kind of pessimistic, but gratitude kind of trains your brain to, to be like Velcro for the positive things. Because normally we're, we're like Velcro for the negative things, right? We have a built-in negativity, but we can train our brain to be positive about things and to kind of deflect the negativity. Yeah, most of our default uh, program tends to be to complain about things, when things aren't going exactly how we want them to go, when we feel something is unfair, a lot of us will default to complaining or to feeling victimized. And I think when you start practicing gratitude, it really helps you to flip that uh, around so that instead of complaining, maybe if you, you start complaining about something and you catch yourself, you can turn that into, well, what am I grateful for in this situation or this moment? or 
whatever the case is. And if you can, I, I think having the concrete practice of doing it every single day, like writing it in your journal or just taking a few minutes to reflect on it at the same time every day, that can be really good to, to build the habit. But then you can start to branch that out and to try to think of it in other moments of your life. If you, if you find yourself complaining or you find that you feel something is unfair or whatever the case is. Even before a meal, like you can stop, mm. close your eyes and just like, just connect to yourself, connect to the moment, connect to the food, the smells, the presence of the people that are, that are around you. I think it's, it's very powerful if you can make that a practice. It's, it's mindfulness in some sense, right? I think you're right, Ethan, and it's so true. I think it comes back to this idea that we have total control over what we focus on in any given moment. So mm -hmm. maybe they are judging you, but if you're not thinking about that, that doesn't have to hinder your connection with them. It, it's about what you say, right? It's about what you do that opens the connection.